Hey folks, Pathfinder Project here. Uh, this is not going to be a music video, as you probably noticed, because I'm talking right now. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do this uh, gear video for some time, but never actually figured when to do it. And so, with everything that's happening with me right now in my uh, personal life, um, you know, I quit my current job and found a new one. Um, and so I didn't have time to record and... Uh, do a video for it uh, in the past couple weeks. So, I wanted to do this gear video uh, for some time, so let's get right into it. Starting on my right, your left, uh, is this Acorn Instruments Master Key 61 MIDI controller. Um, I needed one two years ago because uh, I didn't have one, and it's the most cheap, efficient, and simple one I could find. Uh, that had, you know, all the typical uh, mod wheel, pitch wheel, volume side, and four knobs uh, kind of thing. Works great, as I said, si simple but efficient. Uh, I wish I could have a 88 um, MIDI controller, but uh, based on the fact that I don't use it as much as I thought I would, it'd be pointless to get an 88 one. So I mostly use this when I have to figure out stuff to transcribe and or record, uh, depending if it's easy enough for me to play and or learn, because I am lazy. And I'm not as good a keyboard player as I am a guitar player, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, works great. It's, you know, it's not weighted keys, but it does the job really fine. Um, so yeah, good old MIDI controller. This is one of my most recent acquisitions. Um, the Line 6 Helix LT, uh, fucking powerhouse. Uh, I used to have a Zoom G5N, and this blows it out of the water. It is really, really powerful, especially the, the new uh, firmware update they released at 3.0. Like, holy crap. I love the tactile thing. It doesn't have a touchscreen, but I do love the fact that you can just touch it without pressing it and then change the parameters either here or with the pedal, depending on the mode you're doing it. If you want like a whole uh, review slash uh, walkthrough of this thing, check out some other YouTuber because I'm not gonna do it. It's been done a million times. I'm just late to the party. Yeah, love this thing to death. Uh, staying in the computer slash sim realm, as far as DAW, I'm using Reaper uh, for the plugins. I'm using uh, UVI uh, Workstation using their um, Orchestral Suite or Suite. Uh, I use their Model D as well, which is their piano. Um, I recently got uh, Get Good Drums Invasion. It's killer. It sounds great. It cuts through the mix without being it too loud. Uh, I used to use uh, Addictive Drums 2, but it kind of got stale uh, after some time, and I never could make it sound that good uh, without it sounding like artificial as hell. Uh, this one sounds much more realistic, and you can do a lot of things with it. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend both of these. So right here, I'm using the AT2020 by Audio-Technica. Uh, it's pretty much the only microphone I use. I do have two other microphones, but I don't use them. They're still in like their little pouch. For headphones, I'm using uh, Audio-Technica's ATH-M70Xs. Right now, they're in my kitchen because if you've ever owned the M50Xs, you probably know that this little plastic thing here tends to snap. Uh, I saw it online that it was a common problem. I fixed it using bass string bits, snuck it in there, and it won't bend backwards. I haven't used these in probably a year now, because um, the other ones sound much flatter, and they're really comfortable if you're going to use them for a long time. But they did snap at the same exact part, so right now I just put some super glue in letting it cure for a couple hours. We're gonna get into physical instruments now. This little baby right here is a mandolin, an Alabama something. I don't know the model. I bought one because I wanted one. <laughs> uh, I bought it back in like July or you know last summer 
I haven't even played or learned a song on it. Except for like the intro of uh, Losing My Religion by R.E.M. But that's it. Uh, it's out of tune. Um, and all of my instruments are out of tune right now because it's been two weeks since I haven't played anything, so we're not going to play anything on these. Uh, but yeah, I just figured I could get one to, you know, if I wanted to cover something that has a mandolin for, say, some big rec stuff, I would love to cover them uh, sometime soon. So now I have this. I can do it now. But yeah, I should probably learn how to play it and learn some chords on it because it's going to help down the line. This right here is my baby right now. It's my main guitar. Uh, it's a Sterling by Music Man JP model. I don't remember what the number is. I actually bought this when I bought the mandolin. I was only supposed to buy the mandolin and some strings. Got into the store and there it was. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of the story. Uh, love this thing to death. First guitar with uh, locking tuners, and I want this on every single one of my guitars. It, it it really, really helps changing strings faster. It keeps everything nice and in tune, um, even though it's a floating trim. And speaking of which, at first I hated it because it kept going on a tune, but I found the problem was in the knife edge. There was this little chip that whenever you would, you know, dive and whatnot, and we get caught, and it, would, it wouldn't come back to its original position, so I fixed that myself, and now it stays completely in tune. Uh, Three-way switch, volume tone, uh, I don't remember the name of the pickups, but they're the JP, uh, John Petrucci signatures. Uh, they're killer, they absolutely, they, they sound fucking amazing, and yeah, it plays really well. It's doesn't feel like any guitar I've ever played, The as far as the neck goes. It's really unique, uh, and I love it. I just love the way how it feels. You can really access the 24 frets easily with either your pinky or your whatever the, this finger is called, and this one. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it plays insanely good. This one right, right here used to be my main uh, axe, um, but I switched this one. And this one is currently tuned to C standard, and I'm um, probably going to use it very soon. Because um, you, you got to love your C standard stuff and your down tune stuff. Uh, this used to belong to my friend Sam, brand new music, check him out, I'll probably put a link somewhere up here. Uh, so he sold me that um, at BronyCon 2018, I believe. Plays great. It's, you know, it's your typical Ibanez Nex. Uh, EMG pickups. Um, this feels more like a, tr a traditional Floyd Rose bridge. Um, you can really make it flutter as compared to the JP one where you, you can, but it's, you know, it's not as good as this one or a Floyd. Um, and it really keeps the tune, even though you, even though you can still in tune. Uh, locking nut, which helps. Um, I'm also, I should say that I'm using the Dario NYXLs because they are kings. <laughs> and I cannot wait to try out their new excess strings because god damn it, they keep pushing the limits of strings. Um, yeah, so it's a really cool guitar. Kill switch, three-way switch, volume, plain and simple, and it looks great in dark with the little white binding here. This baby right here is a seven string Ibanez. It's an RG something because, you know, they keep putting a bunch of numbers for their not for their models. Um, so 24 frets, five voice switch, and the second position you can do the Gen T single coil sound that everyone's doing. Uh, volume tone, it's currently tuned to A, so and it's slightly out of tune. I didn't have a seven string uh, before I bought this one last year, I believe. I used to have a, an 80s Washburn uh, G Junior that I tuned to B standard slash like the top six strings of a seven string. So basically all of these except the high E. And I, <laughs> I would record rhythm parts on like the top three strings 
on that guitar and then switch over to whatever my main was uh, to record the rest and it was just dumb. So I absolutely needed a 7 string. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go get an A string anytime soon because uh, yeah, I, I won't ever do gent. Fuck. This beast right here is the LTD B206 SM 6 string bass. It's a fucking behemoth. Uh, it's insanely heavy. Uh, whenever I'm recording parts and I'm, you know, sitting down, after some time I s start feeling my, neb my leg going numb. It's it's dumb. It's dummy heavy, not dummy thick. It's dummy heavy, uh, and when I'm standing up to make a video, it's just, I, my shoulders start to get sore. It's it's incredibly heavy, um, but it plays great nonetheless. Even though, you know, when you're doing riffage up here, it's it starts to hurt after some time. Uh, other than that, it plays super great. Um, 24 frets. Uh, EMG pick no ESP pickups. They're active. Uh, bass metal treble, volume, and blend uh, between these two pickups. And before that, I had a five-string bass, but um, I traded it for this one because uh, the guy was like, "I'm gonna have a much easier time selling a five-string bass than a six-string, uh, simply because it's more common to get a five-string than a six-string, unless you're a prog nerd and you listen to way too much Dream Theater, uh, which." was my case back then. I don't think I could go back to a 5-string simply because of that string, even though you don't typically use it a lot whenever you're doing runs because it's all, they're all fifths. So instead of, you know, having to do this awkward shift at the fourth one, it keeps going. So instead of going up here, you can just keep going up here and stay there and come back down. So yeah, that's really helpful when you're doing crazy fast runs. So this right here is a Norman B18, uh, made in Quebec. Uh, yeah, my friend sold me her guitar, she didn't use it, and uh, my brother took back his guitar that he gave to me. Uh, he stopped playing for, I don't know, like five years, and he, like two years ago, he was like, yeah, I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm gonna get back to it, so do you think I could take it back? I was like, yeah, sure. So I bought it off my friend, and it plays great, sounds great. It's one of my two acoustic guitars, but the other one is not. Uh, it, it's a Nashville tuning, as you'll see. So I'll use it to double this one whenever I'm, I feel like putting a 12 string. There she is. So as I said, it's a Nashville tuning, which is why you really can't see that many strings because they're all thin, uh, at least in the video that I used it, you could barely see the strings. It looked like I was playing like a guitar with no strings, but so I will use this whenever I'm either covering or writing a part that would use a 12 string uh, to double the acoustic parts. Because um, if you've ever played a 12 string, you know it's hard to press down on two strings at the same time with one finger. After like for five minutes, fine, but whenever you're doing recordings and whatnot and you're doing it again and again and again, it, it really starts to hurt. And so, yeah, that's the uh, solution that I came up with because it was laying around in the case and it was in a really bad shape. Like, the, the fretboard had a bunch of gunk on it. Frets were awful. Um, the neck was curved to hell. And it was just awful. Like, you can see a bunch of scratch on it. I don't know if you can with the lighting, but uh, yeah. It's it seen better days, but it's seen worse days as well. And... I guess this is extra, but the lighting, uh, I'm using, uh, smart bulbs. <laughs> I got one for, uh, Christmas from my mom, and, uh, my roommate had, like, four, and she never figured out how to set them up, and I set one up, she was like, how, how did you do it? I was like, well, I just did that. So, she had more, so I hooked two of them on the ceiling, one of them right behind here. Shout out to my friend who gave me a tip to put, like, a white blanket or something right in front of the lamp to fuse the light and it works now um yeah so i just switch colors on my phone and 
to you know make it more appealing and more colorful. Yeah, and right now I'm using my phone to film because I used to use this one uh, before, but it, I bought it in like 2014 and it's it's garbage. It, it films in full HD, but it has like some grain in it. I don't know why. If you know it, you probably noticed. Uh, but yeah, it just. I think it's gonna retire for now because this can film in 4K as you can see my beautiful face and I bought this like cheap tripod so I can actually put it somewhere because I used a boss pedal and put it right behind the knobs so I barely had like one angle or two if I put it on a bunch of t-shirts and try to angle it uh, so yeah that concludes our gear video hope you enjoyed I've been talking for way too long as always uh, be sure to check out my Twitter uh, if you want updates on what's coming, if you didn't know there was no video coming today, well, you're not following me on Twitter, so you better go there. Um, it's just easier to post there um, what's coming and whatnot. Um, so yeah, hopefully new video in two weeks. I will not post something next week because I'm starting at the new job and I just won't have as much time as I do right now. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, whatever. Uh, you do as you, you do, you do you, basically. Uh, this has been Pathfinder Project, and I'll see you guys in two weeks.